What's up folks? Welcome to Power Drift. Today's episode is going to be dedicated to what happens when you take your near and dear loved ones like the car that I'm driving here today, the Gallardo, to a place so befitting that your car walks out of the showroom all happy, all smiles, looking shiny, bright and as if it were new. What happens inside and what really goes on when you drive into a car spa. Made a tune in like 50 sex. Never ever know what's coming next. Oh god, look. I mean the Gallardo does look pretty, but currently it's dirty. There are minor scratches here at the front, major at the back. I know where each scratch sits, so it kind of hurts, but we're about to fix that. The shine is also completely missing because all the dust and the dirt that I've carried over all the way from indoor, it's cutting right to the bone. A little touch from the professionals here, car spa is gonna change the game. A lot of us Indians, by the way, we don't care about the way we look. Sometimes we also don't care about the way our cars look. I'm about to change that about myself today. Let's get started. When your car gets into a car spa showroom, first things first, what's done to the car is a thorough inspection, followed by vacuuming and dry wiping of the interior. And then, as we know, a water wash, followed by tar removal and iron removals. The major stage of decontamination is then carried through. Engine bay cleaning, tire arches cleaning, and, and all kinds of cleaning is then what the car is subjected to. You've seen the stages till now, from what I understand, decontamination has been completed, but then there's more stages that are gonna happen. And for that, I could manage to rope in the founder of Car Spa, Ankur. Ankur, thanks a lot for your time. I just want to understand and want to transfer the knowledge to all the automotive enthusiasts out there as to why is this important and what really happens here? India is a different country than what we would drive in Europe or America. We have a lot of pollution, a lot of dirt and the way we wash cars every day. What happens on the car is like you lose the shine, what it comes from the factory and then there is a lot of contamination. It also gets plenty of damages like yeah. scratches and bird droppings, star marks. And so here in Kaspa, we specialize to rejuvenate it, we detail it to perfection, we go to even single square inch to see the car. And that is how the studios are been made. We use a lot of lights to figure out that what all are going wrong. And we have modern equipments like our gloss meters and paint thickness gauges and other things. So that we do a good analysis that what is there on the wrong, how to correct this defects. Right. And half of the customer who are now already aware of these things, they rope in or bring in their brand new car to us so that they want it to protect it from day one before anything happens to it, car, get it protected. Makes sense. So back days in 2007 when this brand was launched and when we all started, people were not aware what exactly detailing is. So just for, to per se, to make them understand, we started terming it as a beauty parlor for the car. Honestly, I've never really seen a setup like this, a professional setup like this. And so paint gauge and then a gloss meter, these things were like mind boggling for me. Now, my next and perhaps the last question is going to be, what next for Car Spa? How many, how many outlets do we have across the country? And where do you see the market uh, going now? Currently, we have around 73 fully operational store and around 11 stores we have already signed up with some pipeline which will come through in next three to four months. So end of this year, we'll be almost 100 store plus. I see a huge exponential growth to the market from here because things are set. The concept has become an industry now and the traction what we are seeing from last three, four years is very good. Right. So from here, I think the market is going to explode and go very, very big. My estimate is that India would need around 15,000 detailing stores all across the country. And we are looking to have at least a good market share of that. It's tremendous to see the amount of clarity that you have. And I thank you once again for having worked on my car hands-on. Thank you so much, it's a privilege. My pleasure. Don't go anywhere because we also have the privilege of meeting his only son, Deepam. And uh, I'm gonna have some very tough questions for him. 
So I'm very excited today because my car is about to become a Cinderella, if I may call it that. So Deepam's an MBA graduate and of course uh, his father pioneered Caspa. And then what? You have jumped the ship and you have joined your father's ship or, or, or how has it gone? So my job at Carspa is probably more oriented towards the strategy and the sales and marketing part of the game. Papa is more into the technical part, the R&D, the product development and all those stuff that we cannot do. None of us can. So even my mother is by the way involved uh, oh, okay. in some capacity. And my job uh, as a young uh, new entrant into this particular line is to make sure that it is scalable. I definitely don't limit myself to India. So we already have three outlets in Nepal. Oh. And uh, I see a big potential in uh, other foreign markets, especially North Africa, where we feel is going to get the next wave of what happened in India a few years back. Right. So objective of the brand is to scale up. And uh, in India, we are looking at close to 250 stores in the next three, four years. And then probably hopefully enter three or four, at least three or four more countries. Is there enough awareness uh, about you, the, the services and the offerings? The growth in the awareness has been tremendous. So nobody knew. It was like we had to explain ke hota kya hai. Now people at least come forward and say ke, okay, I know a ceramic, I know a PPF, I want to get a PPF on my car, will it protect from scratches? What am I looking at? What am I paying for this? What are the different price points uh, for, of your offerings? Majorly, there are uh, two kinds of services. One is restoring the old car to a brand new condition that is anywhere in the range of 5 to 15K. The services that are more popular these days are making sure that the car is protected from day one. That's important. That is, uh, those are the services that are receiving the most amount of traction in the last uh, couple of years. So in that we have a ceramic coating and we have a paint protection film. And PPF. ceramic, yes, uh, the PPF, right. So the ceramics start at around 20K, go up to 50K. Okay. And the PPFs are anywhere in the range of 65, 70, 75K, that is the starting range. And they go up to two, two and a half lakhs. So depending on what kind of material you choose, they have, we have products from three years, we have a five year, we have a seven year and we have a 10 year PPF. Wow. Depending on what the consumer's budget is. PPF. Yeah, yes. Whenever we uh, uh, sell this kind of a service to a consumer, we also educate them on how to maintain it further. So ceramics need a lot of maintenance. And every one, one and a half year, uh, just drop into our uh, studio for a free checkup. Get a checkup done, get if everything is okay with the car. And if anything is needed, some sort of touch-up is needed, so that can be done and uh, the car is good to go. You have a program that's running across your social media uh, pages. I think it's called hashtag ask the experts, right? Why the, the need for this program? And can I ask my audience to just hop onto it fortnightly and ask you any random question about Caspa? 100%. So uh, the need for this kind of a friendly session or a casual one minute uh, video on uh, overall everything about detailing about what, are, what is a PPF, what is the differences in the type of PPF. We have a lot of doubts what to choose, ceramic or a PPF. And what we wanted to do is probably bring that information out to the public, make sure that they are aware of what they are uh, getting their hands into, what they are buying, uh, how to maintain that and how to keep their cars pick and spanky. I think things have gotten really interesting today morning when I started out the Sunday drive. I didn't know that I would be opening my mind to so much of information and knowledge. And it's quite good content in terms of understanding what goes behind the science of car spa. <laughs> We were midway through the process to make the car shiny and brand new again. What was to come was foam application by foam gun using pH neutral shampoo, claying and clay bar treatment, followed by washing once again and drying by using air blower. Next steps were masking, followed by compounding an important stage in making your car shine good. And then of course, a whole amount of polishing. After polishing, the car gets wiped with zero IPA, isopropyl alcohol, and then the measurements of panels is taken. Then finally, the process of PPF application, paint protection film, begins. Last step, finishing touches and finalizing of all that got done onto the car.
oh my god, it looks like I should have actually entered this blindfolded and then just, oh. I'm going to try to take this off as graciously as possible. Once this is off, oh god. Okay, it's for you to capture and for me to shut up. I'm going to have to give myself some time for this to soak in. But you all can see that this is an extremely beautiful Lamborghini Gallardo 5.0 liter. So uh, this is the, the pre-LP Gallardo, right? And you have these long slat lines on the headlamps. The new ones have short headlamps. Now, one of the reasons I went in for this car is because I love this big, huge headlamp. They have not buffed it. They have done science to it, which means that there are no scratches on it now, no swirls. It looks like a new headlamp. All right, what we're going to do here now is I'm going to understand uh, the PPF film and we are going to be doing a stretch test, which is going to tell us a whole lot about the strength of the film. Hey, you're stronger than me. A tug of war PPF stretch test right here on Power Drift. Ah, are you serious? This is that strong, huh? Ah. <laughs> Al, can you believe this? This is thick. Wow. We have already applied the PPF on the bonnet as a small bonnet. It's like a miniature bonsai uh, bonnet. Yes, yeah. I made some scratches. Yes. So this is the matte PPF, this is the black PPF. So you can just try it out. I'm holding it tight. This side is good? Yeah, yeah. These are the real stones. No way. Oh, impact also. So the stone's also the broken. Impact and everything. This is how I'm removing the PPF now. Okay. So now, no impact has gone below, see. Oh, God. The PPF has done its job. It has sacrificed. It's unbelievable. It's... I... Oh, sorry, this is a matte. We can matte remove the matte one take also. Less scratches. Yes. Matte takes less scratches, less huh? Yes. Okay. So, when you remove the PPF, once this... Matte PPF, we are removing. It's not even easy to remove. It's quite yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. So oh no. Nothing is coming on the car. Gentlemen, the bonnet for your perusal. That's how strong this technology is. Thank you for pioneering this in India. I think uh, it's a pleasure to be having Caspa around for all us automotive enthusiasts there. We out here like put the money in the bag. We out here like doing donuts in the jack. We out here like million dollars with the loot. We out here like fuck around and get the boat. We out here like I'm the epitome of your face. Oh, say that shit on me. Wipe the dirt with the shirts from Italy. Don't look at what I'm doing. It just gonna make you mad. Don't ask me for advice. Fuck that shit. I Put the money in the bag. We out here like doing donuts in the jazz. We out here like fuck around and get the gang shit.